Hey everyone, Chris Teich from HustlingForHappiness.com and in today's episode, unfortunately we're going to be talking about suicide. So this episode was essentially inspired by the news of Twitch. And for those of you who don't know who Twitch was, his name was Stephen Boss, Stephen Twitch, DJ Boss. He was on The Ellen Show for a long time. And you've probably seen it on social media. You've probably seen it a bunch now at this point. You know, people sharing his photo, sharing videos with him. I mean, Ellen tweeted that she was just utterly heartbroken and shared a picture with him saying that he was nothing but love and light. And somebody who lit up a room, any room that he walked into. So a big reason why I started this brand and this channel is because I want to drastically reduce, if not completely stop suicide altogether. The whole reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is to help people with anxiety, with depression, and ultimately stop them from killing themselves. Now it's a daunting task. Can I help everyone? No. Am I gonna try? Hell yeah. And so unfortunately we need to talk about some aspects of this. How is it that someone who is described as being nothing but love and light and caring and positive, who has success, who's achieved their dreams, who has reached the quote unquote top and made it, how does someone like that take their own life? You know, and we've seen it time and time again, unfortunately, we've seen it with Robin Williams, we've seen it with Anthony Bourdain, Kate Spade, these people who make millions of dollars, who are living their apparent dreams, kill themselves. Why? Fortunately, I do not know, and I don't claim to know the reason why. But there also tends to be a common theme between these people. When everybody looks back after they've unfortunately taken their lives and talks about them, they say nothing but positive things, for the most part. For the most part, they're saying positive things, that they were incredibly joyful, they were happy, they made everyone feel better about themselves, they gave so much. And I find it so interesting because I feel that deep down, the people that are the kindest and the people that give the most tend to feel the most amount of hurt and tend to feel the most amount of pain. Now, I could be wrong. I know that that's probably a massive generalization. However, in my experience and what I've come to see and learn is that the people that are quote unquote strong, they spend so much of their time being strong for other people that they no longer can hold themselves up. And this is why it's important to be able to work on yourself every single day. And this is not a rah-rah cheerleader type of thing. I have gone through depression. I still go through depression. I fight bouts with it all the time, every single day. Have I cured myself of it? No. I don't think you fully can cure yourself of it. I do believe, though, that we can turn down the volume. Is it easy? No. Is it a forever, you know, solution? No. But there are tasks which we need to do every single day to make sure that we are doing our best to keep that depression at bay and keep our minds in our control, to be able to maintain and keep our perspective, to be able to recall all the things to be grateful for and really go and serve as best as we can and remember that it's not as bad as we always think it is in our, in our heads. That's why it's always important to be kind to people. You know, I, I don't remember what that saying is, but everyone that you meet is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Things might appear to be okay. They may seem totally fine, which is why it is important to have compassion and just to let people know that you're there for them. This does not mean that you have to bear the weight of being someone's savior. This does not mean that it is your responsibility to keep them from making their own choices in life, but let people in your life know that you are there for them. Let people know that you care. Let people know that they matter. Even if you feel like they don't need it, do it anyway. Say thank you more often. Give praise more often. Give genuine compliments more often. It's really unfortunate when I see something like this because I wish that I could have had a conversation with him. And maybe not even a conversation, but maybe just have been there just to listen. Just to provide ears or advice or whatever he may have needed at the time. I didn't know Steven Twitch boss, but I can see the impact that he left on people. And if you're watching this right now and you do suffer from depression, it gets better. Will you have bad days? Yes. One bad day doesn't mean that you have a bad life. And whatever storm you might be going through right now at this moment, it will pass. It will pass. 
it can get better, you will find hope again. Because ultimately, I believe that people take their own lives because they feel that there is no more hope. They feel that all hope is gone. But that's just not true. It comes back. So as always, I seek to give value. So what are some things that we can learn about how to battle depression every single day? There's two things that I want to highlight. Okay, so point number one, the importance of self-discipline. It's always easier said than done. However, self-discipline is everything. Jocko Willink says discipline equals freedom, and I truly believe that. Discipline is doing what you say you're going to do regardless of how you feel. So, for example, you say tomorrow morning I wake up and I'm going to go to the gym. I guarantee you if that alarm goes off at 5 a.m., you're not going to be feeling like getting out of bed. Your feelings are going to dictate something different than what you're initial desire dictated than what your goals dictate your feelings are always going to want to tell you to go the other way stay in bed it's cold outside sleep in a little bit more you're tired you work hard discipline is doing what you say you're going to do regardless of how you feel cultivating the skill of self-discipline is essential because there's so many other different things out there where people tell you hey have a gratitude journal carry around a gratitude rock Every time that you touch the rock, say something that you're thankful for. Yeah, all of that is good and it's a starting off point. But if you don't have that discipline, if you don't have that initial like ability to push your feelings out of the way and take action, then it doesn't matter if you got a gratitude journal or not. So I want you to ask yourself, what is your relationship with self-discipline? Would you consider yourself a disciplined person or do you give in to temptations? Like guys and girls, I talk about it all the time. I hate working out. I do not enjoy doing it. But I know that if I don't do it, I spiral. I work out to strengthen my mind. And the days that I don't work out, I am more susceptible to life beating the crap out of me and knocking me on my ass. So I get up, I work out, I get it done. If you are a disciplined person, well then good. It will be relatively easy for you to make simple adjustments like having a gratitude journal, like giving back when you're not feeling good. I mean, one of the quickest ways to get out of your own suffering is to go and help serve someone else. Go and serve someone less fortunate than you. It's going to make you feel so much better. A lot of times when I go and I serve at a, at a homeless shelter, I walk out of there and I'm like, man, like, what the hell was I bitching about in my own life? I almost feel guilty because I unintentionally take for granted the things that these people do not have. Like having a place to live, like having shoes on my feet, like not having to worry about where my next meal is coming from. Real problems. But you need that self-discipline to be able to write in the gratitude journal, to be able to practice meditation, to be able, the self-discipline of taking action, to be able to call someone like a therapist to talk to someone. The problem, unfortunately, with a lot of people that experience depression is that they haven't cultivated the habit of taking action. They've unintentionally cultivated the habit of giving in to their feelings. And I know that because that was me at one point. So that's point number one. Ask yourself, what is your relationship with self-discipline? Point number two, what is your relationship with self-forgiveness? This, I think, is actually harder than self-discipline. See, self-discipline is like a muscle. You know, the more that you train it, the stronger it's going to get. But forgiving yourself. Now, that's something that we don't hear often. We hear all the time about discipline, get after it, stay hard, things like that. All of that is wonderful. It's great. And it's important. However, how do you forgive yourself? How can you look at yourself in the mirror, recalling your past mistakes and saying, you know what, bud? It's okay. It happened. You learned. Just try and do better moving forward. How often do you have that conversation with yourself? I know for me, I never had it. I just kept reliving all of my mistakes, all the places where I went wrong, all the places where I went left when I should have gone right. Think about the repercussions of that. That type of thinking generates a particular reaction. What reaction do you think is going to come from that? What effect will transpire as a result of the cause of you reliving past mistakes that you cannot go back and fix. So how good are you with self-forgiveness? There's a couple of different tactics that I personally use that have helped me. Maybe they will help you. I hope they do. For me personally, I like to remind myself that humans are not perfect. And there's a reason why they put erasers on pencils. 
because we make mistakes. But if you look at the word mistake, it is a mistake. You missed. Okay. Do another take. Just like in movies, if somebody messes up, they clap, they do another take. Well, life is kind of like that. But you have to be the one who claps and then does it again. Seeking to be a little bit better than you did it the time before. Seeking to plus it. Seeking to improve and to polish. Not to achieve perfection, but just to get a little bit better. So for me, it's reminding myself, hey, that's why they put erasers on pencils. And also, remembering the fact that when we are born, we come forth into the world knowing absolutely nothing. We have no knowledge on day one. Nothing. Everything has to be learned. And here's the thing. Will you learn absolutely everything there is to learn? Never. Even if you lived for a thousand years, you're never going to know everything that's known. So why don't you just kind of chill out? How are you supposed to know what the right thing to do is when our brains cannot tell the future? You have to remember, and I tell myself this all the time, our brains are capable only of seeing what has happened, but not what's coming. You're going to make mistakes. Accept that from the beginning. Know that you're going to screw up many, many times. And even when you learn the lesson, you're still going to screw up again. And even when you face another experience of life, it's going to strum those similar chords of pain within you. And that similar pain might take you all the way back to your childhood. It might take you back to that experience that made you feel awful about yourself to begin with. Make peace with it. It happens. But just because you make peace with it once doesn't mean that you're done forever. You have to continue to make peace with it. You have to continue to remind yourself, re-engage your mind that you are human, that you are not perfect, that you will bleed, you will feel pain, you will mess up, you will hurt. And guess what? All of it in reality is actually beautiful because it means that you are alive. Whatever pain you're going through, you can overcome. You can. Is it going to be easy? No. But can you overcome it? Yeah. So my friends, those are the two points that I want you to really think about. What is your relationship with self-discipline? And what is your relationship with self-forgiveness? And wherever you might be on your journey with those two points, you can always get better. I hope this episode has brought you some value. Please, if it has, hit the like button, subscribe, share the content. It would mean the world to me if you did. I'm trying to help as many people as I can while I can. And uh, yeah, visit me over at hustlingforhappiness.com and follow me on Instagram, all right? So as always, my friends, keep hustling for happiness. Peace.